morning everyone, or afternoon, whatever time it is that you may be watching. My name is Robin and this is Notting Hook Crochet and welcome <clears throat> to the channel. So, today we're going to do a basic stitch for um, mosaic overlay crochet. And if you've never done it before, this is a very good place to start. And I believe some people call this stitch Apache Tears. But so to get started, what I did is I decided I'm going to make my sample here in multiples of six. So meaning every sixth stitch I will do the drop down mosaic. Every row is done um, with a different color or you can use two colors, three colors, you can use whatever color pattern you would like. So what I did is I took one of these cakes and I broke it apart and I just pulled from the center and chunked it out by colors and came up with all of these little yarn balls and made this sample. So you only work from one side, you never turn your work, so you do end up with the little ends on both sides. You can turn it into a fringe or you can work them in as you go. Or there's some tutorials, a couple of them out there that show how to um, do a double border where you work a border around the edges and close them in where they can't be seen. So I think what we're going to do is instead of um, multiples of six, I want my, my little diagonal stripes there to be a little closer together. Let's try doing it in fours and see how that goes. So this particular yarn calls for a uh, five and a half millimeter crochet hook. So that is what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to lay out my colors here in the order that I want to use them. I think I'm gonna leave this one, these two colors out this time. Okay, so you'll also, you will need some scissors. because you have to cut your, your yarn at the end of every row. So to get started, we're gonna do multiples of four plus three. So we're going to make a slip knot. And form a chain in multiples of four. Um, let's see, one, two, three, Okay, so I have 20 and then plus three. So the plus three is one is your turning chain. And at the end of each row, you have what is called a border stitch. And that's where you're gonna work a regular double crochet. I mean, um, a regular single crochet. The rest of the single crochets will be back loop only once you get past the first row. So, or the second row actually. So what you're gonna do is single crochet, skipping the first chain from the hook. The, of course, the loop does not on the hook does not count. And you're gonna go into each stitch and do a single crochet all the way to the end of your row. And you should end up with 
22 stitches. So let's do that and see how it works out for us. Okay, so I reached the end of my row and I do have my 22 stitches. So I'm gonna cut my yarn and fasten off. And that is row one. Now we're gonna move on to our next color. You can uh, fasten on however you are comfortable fasten on, fastening on. I'm going to do mine like a standing single crochet. So in the very first stitch, not our turning chain, we're going to do a regular single crochet. And then no fancy work on this row with the exception of all your single crochets all the way to the last, very last stitch will be back loop only. So the back loop is the furthest away from you, like here's the V. So you only want to pick up that loop there. This one is a it's a great pattern for getting your feet wet in uh, mosaic overlay, mosaic crochet. Okay, so I'm to my last stitch, and this one is our border stitch. So we go through both loops, go under both loops, and fasten off and cut our yarn. Okay, so that's where we're at now. Now the third row is where we need to really start to pay attention to what we're doing. So we're gonna, again, attach our next color. Very first stitch. Okay. The way I did that is called a standing double crochet. You can also do it by, you know, chaining and then going back into the same space and doing a double crochet. So now, since we decided on multiples of four, our very first stitch is going to be what is called a drop down double crochet. Meaning you would yarn over and come down and pick up that front loop that we didn't use from before. To create the stitch. So then you would yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through the last two. And that leaves the, the stitch behind there is empty, so you need to move over to the next stitch into the back loop and do a single crochet. So that's one, two, three, and then our fourth stitch, we want to do the drop down. Now I like to do mine different from the traditional way of doing it. I like to anchor my stitch because it gives you a beautiful back. You don't have these big pockets forming on it. And I, Actually, I like the back of this one better than I like the front of it. So, our fourth stitch, I'm going to work into my back loop, pull my yarn through, then I'm going to yarn over and come down and pick up the front loop and pull through two. Then I have three on my hook and then I'll pull through all three of those. And then I'm going to do three of the back loop only single crochet. And on the fourth one, the drop down. And that's called an anchored, the way I do it, an anchored drop down double crochet so that I don't get the little pucker pockets on the back. Some people like those. I just prefer not to have them. 
So that's one, two, and three. And then we're going to do our drop down. And when you go down, you go underneath. Don't go in from the top, go in from underneath. Okay, so now we want three back loop only, single crochets. And we're ready for another drop down because we decided on multiples of four. And then three. And that brings us to our border stitch where we're going to work through or work under both of the loops and make a regular, old, ordinary, old fashioned single crochet and then fasten off and cut our yarn. Okay. So then we're ready for our next color. And as of right now, there are pretty subtle changes in the color, but it starts to blend together really well. Okay, so slip knot. Attached to our first stitch. Now we're still working on the same side. We are not turning our work. have my standing double. I have a back loop only single. And now because down here was our first overlay, our next stitch is going to be the overlay. So it's always, almost always, the very next stitch will be your overlay double. So then if you count three back loops, one, two, three, and then it should be a drop down. And then three, and a drop down. And it's easy to find your stitch you're attaching to because it's right next to the, the previous rows drop down. And then three. Look at me. Okay. And three. and a drop down. And now we have two, because that's creating a diagonal line, and our last stitch of a regular, old, ordinary, everyday single crochet. Fasten off, and time for the next color. Let me tell you, yesterday I was working on a, a different mosaic video and I spent hours. I created my own chart, my own pattern, 
mark the whole chart off with the X's to know where the double crochets are supposed to go to create the pattern. Spent hours crocheting it, and I, and I pre-did a sample to make sure that my pattern was going to work, and I did great with that. So I get it to where I'm trying to record it, and I get to get finished and realize, oh no, I messed up. So I had to take out three and a half rows. And I redo those three and a half rows, get it all finished, and I'm like making my closing statement. And I noticed, oh no, way back down, like in the middle of the work, I made a mistake. And I just, I trashed the whole video. I said, I can't do this. You can't do a tutorial with a big old mistake in it like that. <sighs> Anyhow, so now we're going on to our fifth color. And we're going to attach. Okay, so we have one, two. Our third stitch will be a drop down. And then one, two, and three. And our fourth stitch is a drop down. And of course, it's right next to the one from the previous row. And then three, back loop only, single crochets. And the fourth becomes the drop down. One, two, three. And our fourth one is the drop down. That's one, two, three, and a drop down. And then we have one back loop, and we're at the end where we go under both our regular old ordinary single crochet and fasten off, cut our yarn, and then we move on to the next color. Okay, see how we're, hopefully the camera's picking up these, this ridge texture that it's making. Look how nice the back looks by not having those pockets on there. Okay, so we just did that one. Now we're on this color. Going to fasten on. Okay, so one, two, three, and then four. So the next row after this one, we need to create another um, first stitch being a drop down so that it creates another diagonal pattern. So we had three and then our drop down. And then one, two, three, and a drop down. And 
and one, two, three, and a drop down. And then three. And a drop down. And then three. and a drop down. And our very last stitch is our border stitch of a regular old ordinary single crochet and fasten off. Okay, so now if you notice, over here, we ended on this side, so that means when we start our next row, our first stitch is going to be a drop down so that we can create another diagonal line. So we're going to fasten on. Our very first stitch, back loop, and drop down. Okay, and then we should have three back loop only singles. And drop down. And then three. And drop down. Now the reason I picked a, uh, a cake is they choose the colors for me. <laughs> I just look at it and see all the pretty colors. I like the combination and say, okay, I'll try this one. So I took it apart because the colors changing stripes wouldn't happen fast enough for me. Um, like for doing this sample or for something that's small. So I took it apart so I could control where my colors fell. Like if I wanted to, or if you wanted to, because since it would be your project, you could do two rows of each of your colors so that it is more of a chunk, especially since you're working with, you know, single crochet. Or you could do three rows and then move on to the next color. Okay. So we have one more color left in my set of colors here because I took the two out. I mean, I don't dislike those two, but I don't want it to be the one thing that stands out in the whole project. Okay, so our last color is very similar to our other colors. So I tried to keep it to where it looked like it was a gradual change. My little grip thing doesn't quite fit this one. But I've been doing this so much lately that my fingers hurt. I actually have this very nice, at least they looked nice, we'll see when I get them set of hooks on order. Okay, so I anchored on and I have one <clears throat> back loop only and then a drop down. 
But yeah, I ordered these um, <sighs> wooden handled hooks off of Etsy. And, you know, that's the ergonomic, I think is how it's pronounced. It's a little fatter, so you're not having to grip as tight. I can't wait to get them and try them. They should be here. I don't know what's today. I think it said sometime between the 27th and 29th. I'm not sure. But we'll see. So anyhow, um, we got our three back loop only singles and then a drop down. And it should work like that on every single row except for in the beginning of a row and at the end of the row because your diagonal line is moving closer and closer to the end and it's moving further and further away from the beginning. So once it cycles, you have to start a new row. Okay, so our three. And then a drop down. And again, you decide on how far apart you would like these spaced. I mean, you can do every other one if you wanted to. Or you can do them as far apart as you want to. But I think the, the standard out there is um, six and multiples of six. So five singles and then a drop down. So we want both loops. This is our last border stitch here. Okay, fasten off. Okay, so that's where we're at so far. Now I want to do a couple more rows of the, the bluish colors just so that we can really get a full view of the effect of tearing apart my cake of yarn. Okay, so fasten off and we have one, two, and our third one is a drop down. Now, if you were using only two colors, it's really easy to tell where you drop down to because you would drop down to the same exact color. So when you do it like this, you just need to be mindful and make sure you're going to the second row down when you drop. So not that one, but this one here. Hook up that front loop and then perform your drop down double crochet two and three and a drop down. All right, I think we'll stop there. I think you get the idea. 
It's pretty. I like these colors. This is my my other one. See how the the um, diagonal stripes are in. They're further apart. These are a little closer together, so it gives it a little more texture. But the back, nice and smooth. The colors blend on both of them, nice and smooth. Okay, so that would be all I have for you today. And I appreciate you hanging out to the end of the video with me if you did that. Thank you very much. And um, I guess if you're going to do a larger project, it's worthwhile to tear apart your cake. But if you're just going to do a little tiny sample like that, you, you know, you wasted your cake. But uh, could you, you know, if you did it big enough, you know, it almost looks like weaving. Um, Placemat, blanket. Uh, if you used cotton yarn, that'd make a nice dishcloth. There's all kinds of things you can do with it. But this is a super easy way to get started in the world of overlay mosaic crochet. So thank you so much. And we'll see you in the next video.